This conference will now be recorded. Great. Good evening to all members joining from Chennai and uh, good morning to those of you joining from North Carolina. Thank you so much for joining this knowledge sharing session. Um, also a very warm welcome to our guest speaker, Mr. Viswanathan. I'm Vijay, VP Professional Development of the PMI Chennai chapter and I'll be the moderator for this session. Uh, uh, just a few quick housekeeping announcements as uh, usual. Uh, please be on mute throughout this session. One PDU will be provided to all attendees of this session. I will share a link to a feedback form for this session on the chat window later during this webinar. Please fill and submit the form so that I can process your PDUs without any delay. If you have any questions for the speaker, please post them. Uh, in the chat window during the session, and we will definitely cover them in the Q&A section at the end. Right, let's get into the session. The topic for today's session is eight emotional drivers for project excellence, and it's going to be presented by Mr. Viswanathan. Mr. Viswanathan is a Director of Communication Psychology Certified Trainer and a professional member accredited by Global Trainers Federation. He's also a Master Behavioral Skills Trainer certified in Carlton Advanced Management Institute and Middle Earth HR. He is a PMP and has served in several senior level positions for over three decades in India and Oman. As a project manager, he's handled large projects in the oil and gas sector in Oman. He has conducted many training programs for corporate in government and private sector, and also for educational institutions. He regularly writes articles for newspapers and is the author of the book, An Impish Grandpa, a collection of his uh, humorous articles. He has also delivered a session on colored brain, and you can find that video on the Chennai Chapter YouTube channel. I'll post a link to the Chapter YouTube channel later during this session. Uh, right, without further ado, it is our pleasure to welcome Mr. Vishwanathan to this webinar. Yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vijay, uh, for the wonderful introduction. Um, good evening, uh, PMI Chennai chapter members, and uh, good morning to uh, PMI North Carolina chapter members. Uh, so, today's topic is eight emotional drivers for project excellence. So let's get going. Yeah, so what are the learning objectives of today's session? So the first thing is we will explore why people do some assignments with total involvement and by corollary, why don't they do some assignments with commitment and involvement? Right. That will be the first thing that we'll be talking about. Then what creates a high level of commitment so that we can deliver projects with the excellent commitment and then involvement of the people. Then we'll be discussing about the eight motive emotional drivers. And we will also discuss about the plus points, the advantages and the disadvantages of each emotional driver. And finally, we will have an action plan which we can implement not only in projects but uh, in all the uh, business areas that we can think of and also in our personal lives also right now uh, all of us must have known this story the story of the hair and the tortoise we know that the hair is a very very fast running animal and the tortoise, by contrast, is too slow. One day, the hare challenged the tortoise for a race. The hare reluctantly agreed. Then they both started at the same time. Halfway through, the hare took a deep sleep. And by the time it got up, this was the scene. The tortoise had crossed the finish line. So what's the moral of this story? We can have many, many morals. We can say that slow and steady wins the race. Perhaps, yes, true. And one more thing is the, the attitude of the hat. Because first, it was very egoistic. 
that the tortoise cannot beat it in a race. And second, it was overconfident also because halfway it has run very fast and it thought that it can sleep and then still win the race. But that did not happen. So it is not enough that we have skill, but something more is required for people to succeed. So that is attitude which was lacking in our hat. So skill and attitude, right? So the basic is the skill. And then as we go further, we need attitude. But this alone is not enough to scale further heights. So what is it then? So uh, on the basis of the skill and attitude, we build it still further and move on to cost. So what is cost? Cost is nothing but th the bigger purpose, the bigger purpose of doing things, the bigger purpose of leading a life, the bigger purpose of being in the community. That is cost. So when we find the cost for our jobs, then nothing can stop us. The salary, the increments, the promotions, the, the nice words that people say, all those things, probably they can just keep on adding. But those things are not really needed for a person who has found the cost. So cost is the ultimate. So can we have some examples of cost? Yeah. Can we, um, um, by, by just looking at this picture, um, I think all of us can relate to uh, the 26 11 2008 terror attack in Mumbai. And this particular scene is the Taj Hotel, which was one of the main targets of the terrorists. A lot of foreigners, Americans, Israelis, and so many other dignitaries were staying there. So this was one of the targets for the terrorists. Uh, so uh, they, they had attacked this. The, the staff in this hotel, they, they were on duty and they knew all the escape routes. They know where they can run and which door is the emergency door, everything inside out of this hotel, these people know. But not a single staff ran away. They put themselves in the firing line of the terrorists, of the dreaded terrorists, and they saved so many guests. And in the process, I think around seven of them died. So it, even there is a Harvard case study on what made these people do this extraordinary thing. So they found out that it was not their uh, the, the skill, it was not just the attitude, but something more, the cause. They found their cause was in serving the guests. So they thought that the guests are something like God. So they have to serve the guests at any cost, at any cost. So uh, even at the cost of their own life. So this is something which nobody can think of, but it really, really happened. Now, uh, now from this, what lesson can we translate or take it out and then bring it for our own roles in our projects, in our various assignments? See, for example, we all deliver projects. And in every project, we can assign a cost. And if we find out that cost, it is very easy to motivate ourselves and our team members. See, for example, when I was working in Muscat, I'll tell you one example that we did a, a, a construction of a substation and a transmission line in the middle of a desert. So as such, this is a routine job and there is nothing to assign a cause or uh, you know how to motivate these people who are working in hot under the hot uh, conditions but this particular project was given to us to give, given to a company by uh, the by the uh, the king's own uh, very they have very personal group is there so that the security group of the uh, his majesty so who is the who was the king of uh, Oman at that time. So they had assigned this job to us. So what we did was, as, as project manager, I told all our people that this project, though we are doing it uh, as a routine project and in the middle of a desert, this is not an ordinary project. But this project is done for the security of the highest person in this land. So uh, when I said that, 
and uh, i also say added that for such a critical job the, the government of oman has selected our company so then all of you can imagine to what extent to what commitment we should all work and then deliver this project that really turned everybody around and all of them who were initially so reluctant they all they, they got galvanized into the project so every project you can find a cause see for example you may be doing an extension for a project it could be a, a normal project and then suddenly you are doing an extension for this project then still even then also you can say this extension is extremely critical for the company so because without a cause the project doesn't come right so so we have to find out the cause the bigger purpose and then share this with our team members and that will really motivate them to work with total commitment so every role whatever role that we are doing we, we, we that there may not be obviously the cause uh, which we can easily identify but we need to search what is the cause what is the cause probably you may you may be doing a small job uh, uh, a, a small product and then if you find out that this product yeah and you if you find out that this product is going to be long, you used in a rocket that is going to be fired by isro and that is going to lift the national spirits once it is launched so that is the cause so every project we need to identify the cause and sharing the cause with the team members will really really motivate them right now we come to the core of it the eight motivational drivers emotional drivers or motivational drivers whichever way we can call it so i'll first go through them and then we'll come back to them one by one and then discuss the plus points the minus points uh, and then we'll at the end of it we are going to rank our own emotional drivers right okay the first driver is love and belonging so the people with a very high drive of love and belonging they want to be in the company of people they are they they always want to be connected with people so this is the uh, the characteristics of the people with a high need for love and belonging right uh, the second one is control and security so people with a high need for control and security so they want to be safe the first thing is for them is safety 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 and then they also want to control others so that their position is safe so control and security the second uh, emotional driver moving on the next one is diversity so people with a high drive for diversity so they look for variety they look for change so they cannot concentrate on one particular job they want variety so they need to change every now and then they need to change their job they need to change their place so diversity is what drives them right moving further recognition and significance so people with a high drive for recognition and significance so what is their character so they want to be recognized so that is what their primary thing so they want to be recognized and whatever they do it has to be significant so to take an example so now the uh, the india uh, versus england cricket match is going on uh, one of the players for for instance uh, imagine that a player from england england won the last match against india we all know that but if one of the players uh, he he didn't contribute much but their team won so this person this particular player will not be satisfied something will be pulling him down because he has not played a significant role in that win so he has not been recognized because he didn't play joe roots scored 200 so everybody all the newspapers carried his name but not all the others right so the people with a high need for recognition and significance more than their the team win of course they will definitely as a player they will like that but personally something will propel them for greater heights and that is for these people recognition and significance right the next group of people for them uh, achievement achievement is something which really drives them so what is achievement achievement means 
whatever task they have they take up they want to complete it they want to achieve something so that is what is very very important to them if they don't achieve then they will be quite depressed so for for instance let's again relate it to project so you give them a task maybe a very very tough task you you think that particular uh, uh, employee is uh, capable of doing this job and for this person with a high drive for achievement he has to complete that job he has to complete it he has to achieve the, the finality has to be there if not he will you know even though you will you as a project manager you may tell to that person you have done a good job because this is a highly challenging assignment i gave you but this person will not be satisfied because he wants achievement he wants a finality he wants a conclusion to the task so achievement is what really motivates a person okay the next one uh, challenge and growth for these people uh, these drivers may not be sufficient what the primary drivers could be challenge and growth so they want challenge so the same project task if you give them a real challenge uh, a challenging assignment uh, uh, out of 10 people you want to find out who is ready to take the challenge there will be one person who will say yes sir i am ready to do this yes ma'am i am there so they will come running so because you told that this is going to be a really tough job and they are there in that spot so challenge and growth is really propels them right so next is excellence for people with a high need for excellence they have to do everything in a perfect way so they have to it's it's not they have, they don't uh, uh, accept uh, an average they don't accept good they want the best it has to be excellent so if it is not excellent they go really excellent they will feel let down even though it is you know the, their own contribution but they want an excellent contribution right the last the eighth responsibility so responsibility and contribution so both you can uh, say are one and the same so responsibility and contribution so they want to contribute something so you remember we talked about the taj hotel so that if you find that they find that the, the, the cost they need to contribute to the guest uh, so they have to give back something to the society they have to give back something so if for, for these people if you can motivate them like for for instance i was telling a project in oman where, which we were doing for directly for the sultanate of the for the king uh, of oman so uh, somebody who really likes oman so i tell this person that you are going to do a job which is go which is directly going to benefit the country uh, so then he will feel yes i am as a part of this project i will be contributing so that will really drive him because he wants responsibility right so we have quickly gone through all the eight so we'll come back one by one and then we'll also look at what is the plus what is the minus so before we proceed let me give a few clarifications so you may ask you may have a question that okay there are eight drivers it is possible that i may have all these drivers absolutely yes there is nothing wrong but what is important is what is the ranking which do we rank as the number one driver for us which do we rank the second one what is the third what is the fourth like that we need to do the ranking which we will do probably at the end uh, so we will move on to the the first driver to look at it in more detail love and belonging right okay so as i said love and belonging so these people want to be connected they want to be in a group right now you know that we are all working uh, from working from home so these people because they are isolated by distance they may feel with the people with a high need for love and belonging they may really feel bit of a depre depressed because they are not contacting right so what do we do so we really need to make something to see that they are connected so probably you may have a, a video uh, chat like the uh, go to meeting or uh, any other platform so we, you connect all those people so they will be happy so they they want to be connected they want uh, 
love and uh, um, affection from the people uh, love or affection in the sense uh, they they need to be cared they want to care about people and they want to be cared so people is the main thing so what is the plus point of this so uh, you give them uh, a large project and then there are lots of people out there so they will very easily connect with them so that's their advantage but the, the negative aspect everything is if it if it goes to uh, so let's rank each of them on a, a, a grade point of 1 to 10 so somebody has got a very very high probably even uh, uh, you know the highest 10 so they because their need is so high for love and belonging if you deprive them of this people quotient then they will be uh, they they will really feel quite upset so it is very difficult to bring them back into the group so that's the the minus point and the second thing is because they want the people's attention what they will try to do is they will uh, somehow even uh, fake uh, things so that people notice them there is a wonderful movie in uh, in indian cinema in, in, in a tamil movie a regional movie where uh, the heroine you know she has a very very high need for love and belonging so what she will do um, before she gets married she will always go and then talk to relatives she she will call them and she'll be very very happy to entertain them the, um, offer them food and host them for dinners so she she is she is uh, you know all the time she wants to be with people now what happens after the marriage she gets married to an engineer and that engineer is posted in a very very remote project site so he goes in the morning uh, and then um, he, he will come only late evening he comes uh, and this is a remote area so there are not many people uh, her all relatives are all now disconnected so she feels uh, uh, you know she the, the earlier she was highly motivated but slowly slowly it is dropping down and uh, what she does uh, somehow because the uh, uh, the husband is an electrical engineer is a project engineer working for a power station so he has some crew under him if there is any problem in his house uh, he can he has the authority to send somebody and then get get it rectified so just to fake attention this woman she will say that uh, you know she will go up and then uh, turn the tube light and then say to her husband um, um, uh, yeah this uh, tube light is not working can you send someone and somebody will come and uh, you know they will go go there and then she will keep quiet once they complete you know once they complete the job and come she knows because she only has done that mischief so she will say now uh, uncle what do you want or brother what do you want uh, uh, do you like uh, can i offer you a cup of coffee can i give you uh, um, a, a, a lunch for you can i host lunch for you so she will keep on entertaining them because people 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 is what she wants so uh, as she is denied you know as the course in the course of the movie she will be denied that people will find out and then she would go into a depression at the end people uh, the doctor will say her she doesn't have any other problem but only the connectivity so if you are able to establish connection with people uh, for her then she will be a perfect person no, no no need for any medicine so at the end the the, the husband gets a transfer to uh, their own native place where she gets connected with all the people and she becomes a uh, back to normal uh, sort of character so love and belonging right now let's see a small video clip um, there is a um, english subtitles are there um, a, a father and a uh, and a daughter the father has brought up this child uh, b b b this daughter now uh, they have both of them have a high need for love and belonging so let's see what happens there this is the these are all small commercials commercial ads but with the right uh, uh, you know very very uh, aptly fitting our love and belonging description abhi abhi jo ek lamha guzar gaya to ungli pakad ke mujhe bachpan tak le gaya माँ क्या करती है ये मुझे याद नहीं पर पापा मैंने आपको मेरी माँ बनते दिखे सुपर 
बच्चों को सुई से डरते देखा है दुनिया में मुझ पे बनते देखा छोटी में मेरे नचते देखा है So she wants to uh, walk with her dad, you know, and then you know, holding his hand. So that's the, that's a sort of a connection. And for the dad, even though her daughter is uh, uh, cooking for her, they completely spoil the roti. He is not worried. He says, "Come on, come on, I'll take it." Right. So that's the love and belonging. Right. So the second need, safety and control. So what we saw is the people with a high need for safety and control. So they want to be safe, and then they want to be in control of things. So if if the routine gets disturbed, they will be really upset. So again, uh, we talked about the positive and the negative. So people with the high need for safety. So if they are in the project, they can come up with a very very good plan. So if you ask them to make a safety plan, a hen hazard and effect management plan. So they are the best people because safety is ingrained in them. Right, so that's their advantage. So uh, uh, anything, not only for safety, uh, if you want to make a, make a plan, so they will have a plan A, plan B. So because things will go safe, things will not will be very organized and uh, will go as per the schedule. That's how they will do things. The negative aspect, because they are too focused on safety and control, uh, they are. Quite hours to risk, so they will. So anything risk, they will say no. Uh, something very very interesting about this particular drive. Somebody, let's say, uh, has got. Yeah, we 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 talked about the different drivers. Somebody with a high need for achievement. That's is that's their first drive, and they have safety and control as their second drive. So what will happen is. The the achievement drive will you know through that drive they will want to achieve, but the second drive will pull them down. Hey, come on, you are it's it's violating your safety principles. Don't take a risk. Don't take a risk. The inner voice will pull them down. So even though they want to achieve, so that's what you may wonder. What is it? We want to achieve, but something is pulling. Something is again within you. What is that? That safety and control need, which is So dominant, and then it is pulling you down. Right? So, safety and control. The positive, negative is all. We'll see a small commercial. A couple of thieves are breaking into the house, and that person with a high need for safety, what does he do?
safe from triggers and alarm when attacked. Godrich Ritz, Ambassador Sita Nagasa. So he knows, he goes for the best because that person is highly, highly safety conscious. So the moment somebody, some thief uh, attacks the house, they have, a, they have a trigger, right? He or she has a trigger to uh, activate uh, the, the, the protection, uh, the backup mechanism, right? So that's on the, the safety. So we have come, we have covered the second need. Moving on, yeah, diversity and change. So people with a need, high need for diversity and change, so they will always look for variety in their job. They want to change their assignment, their position, their designation. So everything change is what drives them. So if they are going to be stagnant in a position, they will get fed up. They will say they may be getting the best pay. They may be getting the, the, the best uh, description. But still, if they, they are going to do the same job again and again and again, they will say, thank you, let me resign. Right? So because what, what drives them is the diversity and change. So the plus point is, if there is going to be a variety in the job, there are some people, you know, the, the people with the safety need, they will say, you know, put me on the same job, put me on the same job, because they want to be safe in that. But these people, they want variety, right? So they will say, if there is an, uh, another job where there is a variety, they say, yes, I am there, count me in. That will be their spirit. But the, uh, this is the positive aspect. The negative aspect of this drive is that if, if it is going beyond a certain levels, then what happens? So they look for change too frequently and it is very difficult for them to focus on a job. So if, if you ask them to do a very important job and then you say 30 days, you forget everything. This project is so critical. You just do this. So probably at the end of 25th day, they will get restless because they need diversity and change. So this is, uh, we are not playing the video, this is just uh, a, a very, very interesting ad released by BMW. Uh, it's, uh, uh, the, 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 their competitor, you know, is uh, Mercedes-Benz. So Mercedes-Benz CEO, Dieter uh, Shedje, he, he, he retires and on the last day, uh, th this is of course, they, they have not used the same CEO, so they have uh, taken a, a model and then uh, done this uh, ad. So the, the, this particular uh, the CEO, you know, he, he was all the time driving a Mercedes-Benz because he is an employee, he is the CEO of Mercedes-Benz. So on the last day, after he, uh, you know, after uh, he bids goodbye to all his uh, mates, he comes home, parks his Mercedes-Benz, and drives out with a BMW car. So that's a, a, a novel concept which BMW came. So basically, they were working on the need of people for diversity and change. It is because he was associated with Benz that he is not able to drive a BMW. So the moment he is coming out of the job, he is retiring, so he is breaking free. So the plus point uh, we, we saw that they will be re re ready to take more assignments, different diverse assignments, but the minus point, as we saw, lack of focus. Right. The next one, recognition and significance. So for these people, as, as we talked about earlier, they want to be recognized and they want to play a significant role. Uh, so any any project, if, if, if there is a, they are going to do a, a, a role, but for which they are not going to be uh, recognized or there is no significant in that assignment, then these people, even though they may be really capable of that, they will they will not perform to their best. So that's the uh, the character of these people. So the plus point. Uh, so anything where there is an opportunity for recognition and significance, they will be putting their heart and soul. The minus point is you know because they have a very high need. You know even they may they may even steal somebody else work and then say that I did it because you know if somebody has succeeded and they know that it's not their contribution but they may because it's a very very high drive for them they will say okay okay I only did that so since they will see that okay everybody is praising these people so we did it or I did it that's what they will try to say so that's the 
plus and minus of it. So again, a small commercial, a small video. Uh, here, um, uh, a professor is retired. Uh, so let's see what happens in his classroom. So this professor, he never expected that, you know, he's doing his normal job as though it is just any other day in his life. But the, the, all the students, the faculty, faculty members, all of them come together and then uh, recognize his work. Uh, they all uh, sign their uh, autographs and then give them, uh, uh, give him a watch, right? So this is, and uh, see, he's moved to tears by recognition. How often are we recognizing our project team members? So often we are you know, lost in the face of the projects that we don't take our time to recognize somebody and then tell them that, yes, you did a good job. You, you, your contribution was really important. Maybe they did uh, a small application. One of the uh, staff, they would have taken an application and got it signed by uh, a government official. And that would have cleared a big bottleneck for your project. So, so he, this person may be on the lower ranks of the project. So you call him and tell him that your act of getting the signature, remove all the bottlenecks for our project. So it's a very, very significant effort that you put in. So he will be really, really moved. And from that on moment onwards, you can see his contribution, right? So recognition and significance. So very often we don't give our team members uh, this recognition even not only our uh, the, the team members and uh, the, the people who are working below us sometimes you can even tell our boss because something which uh, he or she did could have completely changed the course of the project for the better so go and tell them that your role sir really has removed so many hurdles for me so he or she will feel so happy so recognition and significance is one of the significant drivers for people next one is achievement so people with the high need for achievement they want to complete they want to take up task and then achieve something it is not the normal thing they want to do something and then yes they have achieved it right so that's their uh, the key driver so what is the plus point again so uh, anything you give them uh, your, your client um, you you have to do a project for a client and this project is really critical and you have to achieve this project, uh, give them a target of, you know, this has to be achieved in 30 days time. So they will, uh, because you, you say that if you, if you achieve it in 30 days, it's a great thing. So tell them that and they will put all their efforts because achievement, 30th day or 29th day, they will come and say that, yes, I have completed it. And then they will really feel happy because they have achieved it. The plus point, we saw that. So. Uh, they are ready to take up jobs if there is an achievement question. But the minus point is they may tend to take up even insignificant jobs. You know, they, you, unless they are told the priority, they may take up some random jobs and then they will try to complete it, even though this particular job may not fit into your grand scheme of things in the project. So something insignificant. So probably just for example, a person with a high need for achievement may take his uh, uh, phone, WhatsApp uh, messages, and then today I have to see all these messages, and that they will think is an achievement. So they need to really prioritize 
and then uh, find out if their drive is really helping them to achieve their goal that is for every drive that is the the ultimate testing criteria right does it help you to move forward in your professional life in your career path that's really important right so uh, again let's see a small video uh, one of the marathon runners okay he was in in his days in his prime he was a marathon runner and now he is confined to a, a nursing home uh, and then uh, you know his uh, his shoes are hidden from him because the moment he shoes is he sees his shoes he wants to run so people want to prevent him the, the caring staff the nursing staff they they want to hold him back so what happens let's see So finally, his friend helps him, and uh, then he, you know, he feels that he has achieved because he wants to run. He's a marathon runner in his prime days, confined to the uh, uh, care, care center, you know, the, the the nursing home, and then being uh, shackled by all these people and systems. He that really, you know, demotivates him. He wants to run again. So that see, you can see here. There are lots of people around him. So in case he had love and belonging as his primary driver, he would have been so happy. But his drive is achievement, right? So that's what is uh, uh, is uh, uh, you know his uh, constantly has been trying to break free from that atmosphere, not just to see the fresh air to run. Okay, challenge and growth. So these people, people with a high need for challenge and growth. they want tough jobs so give them the really really challenging jobs where you also link them with the growth so if you complete this challenging job there is a growth uh, so post them in a very very tough location uh, they will say yes i am ready and then you tell them that if you complete this there is a growth for you so because they are focused on challenge and growth so they are they are they are ready to take up any tough assignments so the positive point again so for the for the toughest jobs there are very relaxed, there are hardly people who are you know ready to say yes i will do it in a project but these people if you can find them out they are there they they will be ready to jump in the minus point is that if there is no challenge if it is a routine job they will get bored so they need challenge so that's their uh, the, the the plus and minus of the people with the high need excellence We, we we talked about it in the beginning so they want it is not just achievement it is it is not just love and belonging or but for them whatever they do it must be uh, the top drawer stuff we say no so that that should be there the the benchmark the hallmark so they they benchmark with the best so good is not enough better is not enough they want the best so everything has to be done in that way so Uh, in uh, our project management terminology we we call something like a gold plating right so for them 
they may they may uh, they may try to give the best even though it may not be there in the specification so that could be one of the the minus aspects but the positive point um, uh, for the, the, the if you want a really really excellent performance they are there right so that's the plus and the minus of people with a high need for excellence so you can see here uh, the picture of this a car in library uh, where it has to be pin drop silent right the, none, none of the parts can make a sound in this uh, library so the product has to be excellent so that is what the people with a need for excellent they are they are looking at such products right the last one responsibility and contribution so these people as i said earlier they want to contribute they want to give back to the society to give back to your company so they have to be motivated uh, in such a way that there is an element of responsibility and contribution in the work that they do otherwise they will not be really driven uh, so if there is for example if there is an ngo project and then tell them that this project is for uh, uh, we even in pmi we have so many projects for outreach so these projects they will be they will be ready to volunteer because if you find that there are some people who are always saying i am ready to volunteer why it is because they have a very high need for contribution and responsibility so use them in the project for you know if you find them that uh, the, the the role for the responsibility and contribution they are there to contribute right a small video so here um, Yeah, this boy, uh, he he is uh, he he gets uh, fifty rupees, you know, almost uh, um, uh, uh, quite a big money for this boy, and he has got so many dreams in his life for buying certain things for uh, for uh, eating and all those things, so many dreams. But finally, with that money, what he does? Let's see. He is looking at all these things, and everything you know triggers in him in a desire. The boy has broken this old uh, uh, woman's uh, tea glasses. Now he looks at his 50 rupees. So all that he does is to buy new glasses and then uh, give it to this uh, uh, old lady. Again, in this, you can see that the boy has a high need for responsibility and contribution, and that old woman, she her need is love and belonging. So that's why, when this, even though that uh, boy breaks her uh, glasses, 
she just calls him and then you know taps him on his head and ex extends a very very low and warm gesture right so we have seen all these drivers the first one is love and belonging control and security diversity uh, recognition and significance achievement then challenge and growth excellence responsibility and contribution so we need to really find out what are our top 3 drivers at the same time we should also look at what is our least important driver okay so both are important uh, to tell you an example uh, since we don't have time to do the ranking i would suggest you can note this down and then do this as a homework or later on when you find time this will be a you know highly insightful exercise you will really find out what are the primary drivers for you and what is it that is least important so as i said somebody with a high need for achievement okay so that is the number one driver and they are the least important is for them love and belonging so what will happen so they will not care for people they will just bulldoze the systems procedures everything and they will they will you know dropping people um, you know you demote them nothing will really bother them because their top most drive is achievement the least important is uh, love and belonging so you need to really rank these drivers and then find out uh, the main thing is you have to find out does it help you in your path in your family life even in personal lives uh, you are between husband and wife husband may have a different need the emotional driver and then the wife may have a different driver the wife may have a love and belonging need husband may be high need for challenge and growth or excellence so there will be a conflict so if people understand this then together you know as a project team as family members we can do really wonders so only thing is you once you identify their needs their primary needs if you take that need away from them they will feel you know they will they will drop their performance level so we know we don't need to suck their needs their primary drivers you can do this consciously if you find it is going to really help them see for example somebody you want to improve their performance just like they train the whale in a uh, in a pond so consciously if you if, you, if your intention is good then you can do that but otherwise uh, for some for, uh, for with the negative approach never it's advisable to suck somebody's needs so the action plan going back we talked about the pyramid of commitment so find out in your projects what is the cause and then uh, in your team members and in your your own self what are the emotional drivers what drives you the top 3 drivers top 3 or 4 in that ranking and then what are the top are the, the bottom most one or the bottom two three so rank them then look at them so what is it that i and the thing is you can you can consciously change your drivers even though they are there it is possible for you to change these drivers and once you know them once you realize you can keep on improving your performance level because now you know okay it is it is not helping me so let me reorient my drives let me look at my team members so how can i help them how can i appreciate them recognize them make them achieve so and then together the project will be an excellent project with this i conclude thank you so much pmi chennai and pmi north carolina chapters so this is uh, my, my my contact details my linkedin uh, profile so any doubts uh, in the q and a i'll answer the questions and if anything is there you can get in touch with chennai chapter or uh, uh, to me through whatsapp i'm ready to answer all the questions thank you so much thanks for this wonderful opportunity thank you mr besonod and that was so insightful i think it was wonderful terrific session with a lot of uh, almost tear jerking you know uh, adverts so touchy i think i i had to reach out for some tissue so uh, really wonderful i think um, we have a few questions actually in the interest of time let's go through some of them Um, yeah. I'd like to start with uh, the one that Caitlin from North Carolina has actually posted. Um, as a project manager, how do you think it is the best way to determine what your team members' drivers are? Yeah. Uh, so uh, it, it's it's uh, the the best thing is that if you have a small session like this, and then uh, you know ask them to rank. That's the easiest way, but it's not practically possible. so what we need to do as project managers 
we need to really look around the people and then once they once we give them task what is it that drives them? we need to really observe so uh, so when, when you recognize them and then they are really happy then you find that okay you can tick that box recognition is their topmost driver and uh, give them some very very you know uh, an unsafe uh, job a risky assignment they are they are backing out then which means they are uh, they, there is a high need for control and safety so like this we can uh, uh, especially the the inner circle the the first circle of people whom we are in touch with and those people again they are in touch with their own uh, team leaders right are they as a team leader they are in touch with more people so this as a project manager we need to tell our own colleagues about these drivers and uh, uh, they should also work in locating this uh, drivers so that's how it can be done but uh, consciously if you do uh, uh, if there are uh, limited members probably about 30 40 members the core team then those people first need to know the, about these drivers then they can definitely carry it forward thank you um but if we, by the way in case if you've not noticed caitlin has made a lot of notes during the session and she has promised to share the notes with all of us later on okay. thanks caitlin <laughs> okay we move on to the next question this is from uh, mr ganesan how do we manage a team member who has one or more of these drivers at a level that it almost harms the team or project objectives or even let's say stakeholders yeah uh, so here again uh, let's say somebody has got a very high need for love and belonging so that's there uh, and, and then it is so high okay uh, and, and and then let's say the second driver is maybe achievement again it is so high uh, so we need to really uh, find out their drivers and give them some opportunity for that uh, and more importantly we need to educate them because they they may have these uh, drivers unconsciously without knowing if it really helps them or not and as a project manager we need to uh, find out and then tell them and guide them that this drive this is your 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 top topmost driver but this is not helping you probably it could help the individual but as a project it is not helping the the organization and thing so that has to be made clear to that person and then so then he will realize that okay maybe personally it is good for me but it is not helping the project so that awareness will definitely make him to change his priorities but it has to be done in, in an unobtrusive way yeah so a really good question thank you um i've got a question from mr raja how do we get work done from people um who need multiple follow-up uh, don't really reply for example to emails um you know they don't they defend in all their decisions um don't give proper support to the team um so that sort of an attitude continues so how do we get work done from such people as a project manager uh, can you repeat is it uh, they are the the people are following up with multiple emails and so what's the question yeah they, they need multiple follow-up through emails ah. or maybe even personally but uh, you know they seem to show a lack of let's say um, some drug, some reluctance in carrying out some things. Yeah. Some responsibilities. Yeah, no, no, let's yeah, say. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so it is basically there is some some need has been sucked from them. So when whenever the need is sucked, so, so say for example, I'll tell you a small example. So somebody has a need for recognition. So he is driving the car. Uh, and then you are sitting side by his side and then telling him so this person needs to be recognized because he has he has got lots of skills in driving and the, the person sitting next to him tells him that you know you take right take the second left take the he knows the route by heart and everything is in his fingertips so what we do now is completely we need suck this person so his this primary need is uh, recognition and significance and completely you're taken away and then by giving him all these fundamental things of taking right, left, right, all the, so he gets irritated. So are we sucking the needs of these people? So what is their driver? And if their key drivers are taken out, definitely they'll be thoroughly demotivated. So we have to find out and then uh, you know ensure that these needs are not taken out, taken away from them. 
So niche sucking is something which really demotivates people. But as I said, unless we do this consciously to help them, right? just like we train a whale or train people in the Olympics, so give them tougher, tougher targets. And then, you know, we even say that uh, we deny them their uh, food. And then only when you complete, I'll give you food. So it's basically the intention is good to help them to reach a higher level. So that is fine. But negatively, if you want to pull them down, then that will demotivate people. Thank you. Uh, sorry, two very quick questions. I know uh, we're almost there in terms of the time. Um, there's a question from Mr. Purushottaman. He says the main problem we face in the project-based structure is that our team uh, is worried about job security. Uh, when whatever work they do or they complete, um, there's always this overarching worry about job security. How do we deal with such situations? Yeah, so definitely the, see all the members in the project will not have this high need for safety and security, but there are there will be definitely sizable number of people with uh, a high need for uh, so these people they have to be uh, you know assured that uh, if if, if uh, after this project if there is because we have we cannot tell them that uh, with this project the things will come to an end so we need to give them some positive hope and uh, if not we have to guide them that okay uh, we, we will definitely help you with a very see in uh, i have handled many projects in oman so in fact, uh, uh, it's uh, since you, since you asked this, uh, so I left a very very good job from India and then went to Oman. I I never because I have I have very high need for the safety and uh, um, uh, controls. Uh, so the the first project I left Reliance and then went to Oman. The first project got over in ten months, and I was thinking that this is there for, for my lifetime. So when it came to tenth month, then they said that we are going to demobilize. And you can go on a long leave, and when the next project comes, we'll call you. So it was a shock of my life. I have left such a, such a, a cozy job and then done this. But luckily, you know, they said that uh, we will give you a very good certificate. And then the client also, you know, the client was Petroleum Development of Oman. So they also will give you a certificate. And with this certificate, in case, even if we don't have a job, anywhere in Oman, if you apply, they will uh, 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 give you a job. So that really gave me a lot of confidence. So it, I, I was not worried. Okay, so I have I run something in 10 months and that can give me a very good certificate. So they really did that. So that sort of a comfort level we should give because we probably we may not be able to give them a job, but the comfort level on the safety aspect, we have, we have to do, take care of them. Great, and one final question, Mr. Vasan. Uh, Wishes to know where does money fit in the emotional motivational drivers? Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, excellent please. question. Uh, probably I, uh, I I didn't uh, touch this. It's uh, it's uh, it's one question which covers all the all these drivers. Okay, so uh, good that you 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 asked this question. So money, so money is not the primary motivational driver. Uh, so I'll I'll give you an example. It is uh, with that money what you are going to do. That is that is the driver. So, for example, uh, you are you are given uh, ten million dollars. So, just like that, you are going to be given ten million dollars free. So, now with that money, what are you going to do? So, if you say that with that ten million dollars, I'll build a house, right? You are going to build a, the great house. But again, you should ask, what for? Are you doing this house? So that, all my relatives can stay in that house. All my family members. <laughs> I have to build the house. That means the entire the significance. That is the drive, not the money. Then somebody says that I want to change uh, this house. Uh, uh, record that. And then with the best specification. So it, it has to be the best house, not for the recognition, but in terms of quality. So then that means excellence. Or if you want to achieve something, then achievement is a drive. So you need to really probe. So so generally when we are, so people may ask you in the project team, they may ask money. So I need increment out, but you need to find out why do you need, why do you need if you ask, then you can 
go back to their primary drivers so money is not the, the primary driver it is because of some of these drivers we need money thank you so much i think we know uh at the end of this session, I really appreciate your time, Mr. Vishwanathan, on a Saturday evening, late evening, and uh, it was such a wonderful session. Uh, you can please go through the chat messages. There's been some wonderful comments about the presentation, and I'll definitely share the feedback from our members on this session. So uh, once again, um, on behalf of Chennai chapter, I think we're grateful to you for this presentation. Uh, I will send you an e-memento on behalf of the chapter, so if you could please share that on, on your social media channels, that's much appreciated. Um, just a very quick announcement to everybody before you leave. Uh, PMI ACP training by the Chennai chapter will be conducted in the month of March, uh, so please contact Mr. Shivaram, and uh, if you are interested, please drop an email to vpcertification at pmi-chennai.org. Uh, or if you need more information, please get in touch with me. And I'll be able to guide you. Uh, so on that note, thanks everyone for joining this session. Uh, we hope you had a, a good time uh, listening to Mr. Viswanathan and hope this presentation will be used to you. Uh, so we look forward to seeing you again in the next session. Uh, the next chapter event will be on the uh, 6th of March, which is International Women's Day. So let's all join again to celebrate International Women's Day. Thank you all. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Now, <laughs> <laughs>